right, guys. So we're going to get started. And we're going to start in a seated position, sitting up nice and tall here on your mat, drawing those shoulders back and down. And for those of you that are going to maintain a neutral spine throughout, uh, just just skip some of the articulation. So in this one, we're going to start with that pelvic tilt. So you're going to work just that hip hinge, maintaining that nice flat back, that neutral spine. If you know that those articulations are contraindicated for you for right now, working into that lumbar flexion is a no-go. So arms are going to come out in front or holding on to the back of the legs for more support. Dropping those shoulders down, we're going to tilt the hips back, sinking into that nice deep C curve. So you're tipping back onto your sacrum, open and wide through the collarbone. And we're going to roll back just towards the top of the pockets, the back of the hips, connect the shoulders in and down. And on your next exhale, we're going to pull navel to spine, curl and roll forward. Once shoulders are over the hips, we're going to extend sitting nice and long, nice and tall. And again, for those of you that are not articulating, it's a flat back hip hinge to maintain that neutral spine, that small little curve in the low back. Exhale to tilt for those that are articulating rolling along the tailbone, and then up the sacrum, We're working vertebra by vertebra, all the way back, tilting back, connecting those shoulders in and down, drawing navel to spine, drawing the abs in deeper so you feel that lovely stretch across the back and the sacrum as you curl forward. So I'm not ready to sit tall yet until my shoulders are over my hips. And then up I come to that long spine. Let's go for one more. Exhale to tilt. Imprint back along the spine, vertebra by vertebra. Connecting to the mat across the pockets. And on that next exhale, pulling in a little deeper, drawing the abdominals in, shoulder over hip, and lengthening long. We're going to reach that right leg out nice and long across your mat. I'm going for plantar flexion in the foot to activate the back of the leg more to deepen that abdominal connection. If you know the foot or the calf tend to cramp, go to dorsiflexion with your toes pulled back. And we're going to work one little tuck or a hip hinge to curl back. For that curl, notice the leg starts to travel along the mat because it's pulling back slightly with the torso. I'm going to hinge back or curl back as far as I can without losing my position. And then curl and roll up or hinging up. So for those of you that are working that flat back position, I'll demo one rep there. We're going to inhale to hinge. Pausing for a moment and hinging back up, not losing the connection with the mat and the foot. Curling or hinging back. And slow to restack and reset. On my next one, I'm going to hinge or curl back about halfway, not as far as I did before. Float that right foot up and pull the knee in and send the leg long. Drawing that leg in, trying to hold that torso position as best as I can. One more right side. And reaching that leg out, hinging or curling back up. And we'll switch legs. Right knee will bend, left leg will extend. 
and we'll curl or hinge back, keeping that leg, the left leg, nice and long across the mat. With the leg down, you can roll or hinge back further. Working through that articulation. Allowing the leg to move as you curl. And on our next one, we're going to hinge or curl back part way. So I'm going to come just onto the back of my pockets, float that left leg, draw the knee in, and reach it out. Two. And three. Foot comes down with a straight leg. Curl and roll up. And sitting tall. We're going to open our stance with our feet and our legs to about mat width apart. Sitting up nice and tall and long. Arms are out in front. For those of you maintaining that neutral spine, we're going to hinge forward. Flat back to stretch the back of the leg, the calf, and hamstring. Reaching forward with that flat back and coming up nice and tall. For those of you that are enjoying that articulation, we're going to drop chin to chest and start to fold as if we're rolling off of that wall behind us. Curling and rolling forward over the thighs, fingertips to the toes or to the shins if you can't reach that far just yet because of tightness in the back of the leg and rounding those shoulders back and down, breathing into that stretch and then restacking segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra, stretching up nice and long. Reaching out. Deepening that stretch as you press the back of the legs down into the mat, being mindful not to overextend the knee. And one more. Restacking nice and long. I'm going to tuck and curl, or again, working that hip hinge without the articulation. Curling and rolling back. Notice the legs glide with me. I tuck back onto the sacrum, and right arm's going to rotate back through the mid ribs. I look back over that shoulder and hand, back to center. Left arm rotates back, even weight through both hips. I'm in this nice deep C curve for those of you that are articulating or working that hip hinge. And my rotation is coming through the mid ribs, right across the bra line, just below the pecs, keeping my hips squared off with my legs. Navel's pointing straight ahead, so there's no rotation through the low back. One more each side. My left arm stays pointing towards my left toes. As I rotate through the mid ribs. And curling and rolling up. Reaching forward over the legs. Stretching out nice and long, either in that round back or flat back. 
reaching your tailbone behind you as you send your heels and your legs forward to create that length through the leg. Gliding the shoulders down away from the head and the neck to lengthen the spine deeper. And curl and restack. Sitting up nice and tall, nice and long. We'll bring our legs together at the center line. I'm going to dorsiflex at the ankle so the toes are pulled back. Bring my hands out to a T position, going palms up sitting as long and as tall as I can, rotating through the mid ribs. I'm going to rotate right, work a double pulse, one, two, come back to center, drop those shoulders, no shrugging, rotate the other direction for a double pulse. You can modify to a bent knee to decompress the hip flexors at the front of the hip. And just remember to focus on that rotation coming through the shoulder girdle, through the mid back. One more each side. Arms will come up and we'll curl and roll forward or hinge forward from the hip, reaching for the feet, dropping those shoulders down. We're going to get a deeper stretch here with our legs together at the center line, lengthen the spine, either in this rounded back position or in your hip hinge, flat back, proud chest, and Pulling back on more of the ball of the foot, if you can reach that far. You can even go to the side of the foot. Try not to pull too much just on the toes. Otherwise, you get this movement through the toes instead of at the ankle. So I want to get into that dorsiflexion at the ankle joint versus the top of the foot. Deepening that calf stretch by driving the heels away. And one more breath. And we're going to curl and restack, sitting up nice and tall and long. I'm going to take my leg stance back to that wide position, mat width apart. Arms are going to open out to a T, palms are facing forward, we're working into our saw movement. So I'm going to twist over to the right, right arm goes back behind me and then rotates palm up so my left arm can come across, reaching for the outside of that right foot, anchoring into my left hip so I don't tip off that left side, lifting up into that extension. If you're adding that rounding through the back and unwinding, left arm goes back. I internally rotate, so my left hand is now palm up, right hand is going to saw forward towards the outside of the left foot, and in this rounded position to begin with, anchoring my right hip, and then I lift the chest into that extension, nice flat back, reaching longer. Hinging up and unwinding, rotating and hinging, working into that extension and unwinding, switching sides. Now try to coordinate the movement, smooth it out a little bit more, and we'll go one more each side. Last one. And arms will curl forward, rolling the torso forward, reaching out and stretching forward over the legs. Again, working that ankle movement 
to get that deeper stretch through the back of the lower leg. One more breath. And we'll work into a nice little hip and rotational stretch. So we'll bring our legs to center. Taking your right leg, cross the left foot, left leg over the top of the left. Right leg over left, excuse me. And now my left arm is going to come to the outside of that right side. And I'm going to rotate back. My rotation, again, is through the mid ribs. Opening up the right hip, rotating through the chest, through the shoulders, and back to center. Straightening out that right leg, left leg crosses right, right arm comes to the outside of the left leg, up by the knee, and I'm working deeper into that hip stretch. Rotating through the mid ribs for that twist. And if you felt that the right side was tighter, switch back to that other side, otherwise stay here, and we'll hold here for another three or four breaths. But I want you to double up or spend a few more breaths on that tighter side. Last breath, and we'll unwind. We're going to roll onto our left side, and we're going to lay flat. Head on your bicep. So on Saturday, we did more of that forearm position. We're going to go full sideline here, and we're going to stack both legs. So the legs are stacked, and I have a little bit of flexion at the hip line. So my feet are to the front edge of the mat. My top right hand is going to be on the mat in front of the rib cage, and I'm going to drop that right shoulder down. My right leg is going to reach and extend out of the hip, and I'm going to lift it up and slow to lower. Reaching out nice and long, extending that right leg out of the hip. And I'm not taking it very high because I want to keep the tension in the leg and the length along the side of the torso. If you're having trouble balancing or you're feeling really unstable, bend that left leg to the table, sideline tabletop position like we did on Saturday for better support. That's going to give you more space on the mat to stabilize the body. And now our top right leg is going to hover parallel to the mat and we're going to bring it forward and draw it back into extension. Now as the leg is moving, we're maintaining that neutral spine. We're ensuring that we're not going into flexion as the leg comes forward or overextending up into the low back. Reaching long with that top right leg. And then slowly increasing your range. If you feel like you can dial in that stability without moving too much, One more. We're going to bring our legs stacked, aligned with one another, but floating that top right leg about 12 to 18 inches off the bottom. And now my bottom left leg is going to come up to meet the top. 
So I'm working that adductor, inner thigh, bringing the left leg up to meet the right. And if you need to modify this position, you can always bring that top right leg forward and work just the bottom. If holding that right leg out does not work well for the position for you. Last two. We're going to bring our legs together, stack them on top of each other for our double leg lift. Exhale to lift and slow to lower. I like that little pause at the top. So we lift and hold for just a moment and right back down. Drawing the rib cage in, reconnecting in with your center line. And last three, dropping that right shoulder down away from the neck and the ear. And finishing off that last one. We'll roll over onto our stomachs to go for a little back extension and hip extension before we switch to that right side. Forehead is going to rest on the back of the hands, tucking the tailbone slightly as you draw the shoulders down and the ribs and abs in. We're going to float those, that right foot up off of the mat, working our single leg hip extension. We're going to inhale to lift and exhale to lower. The movement is coming from the hip itself, so we're not taking the leg so high that we end up overextending up into the low back. So the very top of the right thigh still maintains a slight amount of contact with your mat, as well as the pubic bone. So the whole front of the pelvis anchors into your mat as the leg lifts. Two more on this right side before we switch to the left. Squaring off the shoulders, ribs and hips, anchoring that right leg into the mat, floating the left leg long, and inhale, left leg extends. Keeping those shoulders connected down and back, and start to gauge and feel which leg you're getting more range out of than the other. And if it feels as though you've got more restriction on one side, as far as you can't get as much movement out of the leg without it going into your low back, go back to that other side. So I'm going to switch back to my right side because I didn't get the same amount of height. I could feel that tightness in the front of the right leg and hip. And this may be for you for your left side. Or if both sides feel fairly even, just do a couple more on either side, balancing out the work from right to left. We'll go for three or four more reps. Legs come together. They're going to rest on your mat, tucking the tailbone slightly. Still with the forehead resting on the back of the hands, we're going to inhale to lift arms, head, neck, and chest into that thoracic extension. So inhale to lift and exhale to lower. If the hands at the front of the face is pulling too much on the back, you can bring the arms down by your side for basic back extension. As the arms get farther out or overhead, it adds more challenge to the abdominals and increases a little bit of tension to those back extensors. You have to play around a little bit with your arm position. Two more.
Resting the forehead once again, we're going to work into our double leg lifts. Tuck the tailbone, draw navel to spine, pull into the inner thighs, and we're going to inhale to lift both legs, and exhale to lower, float the toes. Reconnect those shoulders back and down, and lift. Resetting the shoulders, the ribs, the core, and the glutes every few reps to ensure that you've got as much control and stability for each repetition as you can. Three, two, one. We're going to bring our arms out to a T position, long through the back of the neck, and we're going to inhale to lift the chest, and exhale to lower. Legs are long and strong out on the mat. Two more. Hands come by the chest. We curl the toes under, peeling and rolling up, sitting back towards your heels to stretch into your rest position or child's pose. One more breath. We're going to come out to our quadruped position. And we're going to start with knees under the hips and hands and wrists right under the shoulders. We're going to work into our knee tuck. So I'm going to curl the toes under and then pop those knees up. Nice flat back. Ribs and abdominals knit in. I've got that little gap at the low back. Holding strong, pushing away from the floor so my shoulders are strong and broad. Three, two, one. Dropping the knees, reaching that right arm up overhead, left arm laces through, and we're going to sit back for that stretch. Looking under the right arm as you sit back. Unwinding, coming back out, either hands or forearms, right underneath the shoulders. We're going to step back with that right leg, nice and strong. And left leg straightens for our center plank. Drawing the tailbone down towards the back of the knees as we pull our abdominals up and in. Feel as though you're squeezing a towel between the inner thigh. Shoulders are sliding back and down. Holding strong throughout the entire body, and two more breaths. Dropping to the knees, left arm reaches out in front, right arm laces through, and we're looking out underneath that left arm.
One more breath. And we'll curl and roll up. And we're gonna switch over to that right sideline position for the sideline leg work. So I'm starting with straight stacked legs, slightly forward to the front of my mat. So my torso is somewhat centered and the legs are forward for that little bit of hip flexion. Left hand is flat on the mat at chest height. I'm gonna float the top left leg and it's gonna reach up on the exhale, slow to lower on the inhale. Again, if you're having a hard time balancing in this position, you can always bring that bottom right leg up into that sideline tabletop position for more stability with more contact of the leg on the mat. You have that broader space to help create more balance. Last three with the left leg. Left leg will float above the right. We're gonna kick forward into flexion. Small movement, so it doesn't go into the low back. Point the toes in to plantar flexion at the ankle to reach the leg back for hip extension. And flex at the ankle, bringing the leg forward nice and slow. So there's little to no movement in the torso. The hip extension with the leg going back behind is a much smaller movement than the leg coming forward into flexion. Tightening up the midline, not only the abdominals, but especially the back extensors to stabilize the spine. So they're working in this nice co-contraction together to keep you as strong and stable as that left leg moves. Finishing up this last one here. We're gonna restack the legs tuck the tailbone just slightly, realign the spine. We'll float that left leg up about 12 to 18 inches up off the bottom right. And on the exhale, we're gonna bring the right leg up to meet the left. Now, holding that left leg up is too challenging for the hip or causes discomfort. That left leg crosses forward over the right into that sideline tabletop position and just the right leg moves. Finding that position that works best for you to give you as much stability. And we stack the legs, stacking them together for our double leg lift. On the exhale, both legs lift, pause for a quick little breath, and then slow to lower. Try to float the ankle and the feet up off your mat to go right back into your next rep. Last three. Shh. 
We'll flip over face down once again. Hands are going to be by the shoulders. We're going to retract the arms back. Draw those shoulders back. So we've got that pinch of the shoulder blades into the spine. And we're going to inhale to lift. Head, neck, chest. Arms go out to a T. They pull back in, elbows bent, hands by the shoulders. And we lower down, resting the arms and the hands on the mat. So we're going to take it step by step. Hands and arms retract, drawing the shoulders back and down. Inhale to lift the chest. Reach the arms out, drawing the arms back in, and slow to reset. Remember to scale the arm movement. If you find that going too wide with the arms out to that T causes any discomfort, scale it back. Take the arms to a point where you're still challenging those back extensors and abdominals without causing discomfort or shifting out of alignment to create that extra movement. Last two. We're going to curl the toes under, hands by the chest, and we'll peel up. Sit back into that rest position. Reaching out nice and long overhead. We're going to take our hands into a knife position, so thumbs up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to roll to the back of the hands. Rolling to the side towards that pinky finger. And then back out, palms up. You can take your arm position wider on your mat if you have some restriction in the lat and in the shoulder. That wider position may be easier. And then start to play around with walking the hands in closer. Rotating the arm in the shoulder to create that palms up position of the hand. And we'll go for three more. Reaching out, sink that tailbone back towards the feet. And one more. Restacking the spine, curling up, and we're going to come onto our back, bringing yourself to the center of your mat, and we'll curl and roll back, nice flat back, little gap at the low back, and we're going to finish off with some of our pelvic curls or shoulder bridges. So for those of you that are not going to be articulating your spine, you're going to keep that neutral position. Heels are in line with the sit bones, and we're going to bridge and lift the hips straight up, pulling the rib cage in. There's no articulation of the spine. We're maintaining that nice little gap at the low back. Ribs and abdominals are knitted in nice and tight, and the hips lift as the knees push forward towards the toes. For those of you that like or find benefit for that spinal articulation, on your exhale, we're going to tilt the hips back. Imprint the low back. Draw those bottom ribs in. Start to scoop the abdominals up as you lift the hips, sending the knees forward towards the toes, drawing to the inner thigh. We pause for a breath at the top. Whether you're curling or maintaining that strict bridge, and then slowly resetting. 
curling along the spine all the way through to the hip towards the tailbone. Finding that connection through the core, through the torso, as you move through. And last two. Taking your time through each rep to ensure that as you come back to the mat, there's no rotating through the hip or the spine. Activating those inner thighs, drawing into the adductors so the knees stay lined up over the center of the foot. And slow to curl back down. All the way through to the tailbone. Legs go straight and long. Arms come up over the chest. On the inhale, the arms start to lower to fold the mid ribs to lift the head, neck, and chest. And then exhale to curl, peeling up segment by segment, vertebra by vertebra into that nice deep C curve. Rolling forward over the legs, reaching long. Restack the spine, sitting up nice and tall, lengthening through the spine. We're going to go for two more. Either hip hinge or articulate. Exhale to sink for that curl. Rolling back as far as you can without the feet leaving the mat. Resetting the spine segment by segment. And inhale to fold and lift across the midribs. Exhale to pull the abdominals in deeper, reaching the arms long without collapsing the chest. Finding that C curve of shoulder over hip and continue to reach forward out over the legs. Taking a breath, restocking the spine segment by segment, long and strong, and one more. Exhale to hinge or sink deep into that C curve. Articulating along the spine, keeping the ribs down and in as you reset the head and the neck. And last one. Stretching out over the thighs. And slow to restack. Alright guys, awesome work today. Thank you so much.